like to talk about the monkey puzzle tree, uh, Araucaria araucana. Um, the tree behind me uh, is native to the Andes Mountains of Chile and Argentina. And this is among the oldest species of trees on the planet Earth that are still alive as a species. So um, if you look at these trees uh, a little closer, they got their name when an English gentleman saw how he touched the leaves and saw how incredibly sharp they are and and said ow oh, why it would puzzle a monkey to climb such a tree and so the nurseryman who was growing them thought that was a clever name for the species and they've been known in the western world as that ever since monkey puzzle trees sometimes people nowadays call them monkey tail trees because of the way the tails swoop around and such but uh, um, but uh, um, in uh, in South America, um, uh, there um, the uh, the trees are referred to as piñones, uh, the nuts as piñones, and uh, uh, and the trees are the the Latin name for for this species, Araucaria araucana, refers to the araucana people uh, uh, of South America, of the Andes Mountains, for whom the nut is a staple food. Uh, the nuts are um, this is a pound right here, uh, recently harvested. These nuts have a very thin shell, and uh, so they're easily cut with a knife, not a nutcracker, a very thin shell like a chestnut. And uh, the flavor kind of reminds me, if you could cross a chestnut and a pine nut, I guess, uh, that would be what it most closely resembles to me. Uh, the native peoples in, uh, in the Andes Mountains, the Mapuche, uh, people and other uh, tribal peoples in the Andes would use the nuts as a staple food. Uh, these were people that were semi-nomadic and they uh, uh, harvested the nuts and would grind them into a flour. Um, when we were visiting um, in the Andes Mountains uh, on one of the reservations, we found them selling uh, uh, cookies made from the flour of these nuts and uh, they were delicious. Um, so it's a nice uh, versatile nut. As I say, it was a staple food to these peoples, much like uh, corn to the Aztec and potatoes to the Inca. It was a staple uh, uh, carbohydrate food and, and a source of protein as well. And, uh, and because the, the native peoples were so dependent on this nut tree, um, uh, it was a way for the, uh, the Spanish uh, colonialists in South America to suppress the native peoples. Uh, Nevertheless, they still resisted uh, colonization in that part of uh, Chile and Argentina until they were finally defeated by the Spaniards and uh, colonialists in 1885. So they were uh, uh, resisting for quite a while. Uh, and, uh, and, and one way that they, the native peoples were suppressed was they cut uh, much of the forest down. Uh, the wood itself is slow growing and a dense hard wood. So it had value uh, as a commercial timber, and it was also a way of suppressing the native peoples. When we were down in South America a few years ago and visiting uh, the, uh, the forests, we found um, plantations of non-native trees mile after mile on the way to the, to the uh, uh, reservations and parks where these trees are protected. And so they were plantations of Douglas fir and other non-natives and then when right when we got to the Indian reservation, it was solid monkey puzzle forest. In a rocky, inhospitable mountain soil, these trees were growing there, and some of those trees were as much as 2,000 years old, growing in this rocky, inhospitable environment. Now, we were there in January which uh, in South America would be the climactic equivalent to our Junes here. And while we were there, that afternoon, it actually snowed on us, and the snow started sticking. So that just shows you what an inhospitable uh, climate these trees are adapted to. But you know, when you're on this species, uh, back to the Jurassic period, uh, and incidentally, they evolved these sharp leaves so that dinosaurs wouldn't eat them. And so <laughs> that just shows you how old and how many changes uh, this earth, the weather climatic system on this earth has gone through the ice ages and so many different uh,
climatic uh, episodes have occurred in, in, in the millions of years since they evolved. So these are uh, among the oldest species of the conifers uh, that exist on Earth, uh, the ancestral trees, you could say, of other conifers. And uh, uh, so a very important tree, um, and yet uh, uh, nowadays trade is, uh, is restricted for the nuts um, in, in the native region so that uh, the native peoples can still uh, enjoy a part of their culture with these nuts. Uh, and, uh, but here in the state of Washington, um, like these trees here, the trees that I'm standing in front of, I planted about 30 years ago. These are slow to reach maturity. They're very slow initially. Uh, the first year we'll typically get a, you know, uh, about this much growth out of them, uh, just a single shoot. Second year they'll make a set of branches and grow a couple more inches. So they are very slow initially. Uh, uh, when I planted these out, you know, they were probably um, uh, six inches tall or so. And, and, um, but as they've established, you can count the, uh, the growth period in the interval of branches. So when you see an interval of branches here, and then another one there, and then another one there, and another one up there, you can see that the interval of branches is uh, about a foot apart on average. And uh, so, um, so they're able to grow about a foot a year once they get established. But for the first uh, eight years, it's real slow growing as they as they get their root systems well established. But uh, even uh, if you look closely on these trunks, that even the trunks contain these spikes when the trees are real young. Um, but as they get older, uh, the trunks, you can see at the very base of the tree here, the trunks uh, create a more uh, of, a, of a pattern that's uh, at the base there. You can see the trunk eventually creates a, a very thick bark with a pattern that resembles that of an alligator hide. And the, the bark on these mature trees can get quite thick, like we're talking about up to a foot in thickness on a mature tree. Of course, they can get over 100 feet tall and they can, uh, they can get up to four and a half feet, five feet diameter on a real mature old tree. Um, they do not like poor drainage. Um, they, uh, so we've got them at the top of our hill here in our our best drain site, and and um, they uh, they can tolerate part shade, like right now they're in the shade of these towering Douglas firs here on our neighbor's property. Um, they uh, uh, they're very tough trees, though. the The cones uh, take two years to ripen. Now the trees are either male or female. This is a female tree, and uh, and they'll produce these cones, and they will typically um, be uh, um, uh, about 300 nuts in a cone. A cone at maturity is about the size of a football uh, and uh, maybe a little fatter. And uh, fortunately, they don't fall as a cone. They tend to disintegrate in the tree and fall uh, as individual nuts. And they even have a little wing on the, on the base of the nut here that that helps propel the tree i guess a little bit uh from from the uh mother tree out a little ways uh from just falling directly underneath it but uh, uh at any rate uh they um um so the the female uh trees produce these these uh, flowering uh parts that uh, that as the cone develops it becomes an upright cone on the on the on the uh, pointing upwards, whereas with the male trees, uh, we can walk over here, being very careful not to brush against the branches. Uh, a male tree has more of a brown catkin-like flower structure that hangs down. Uh, as When it's mature, it's a brown catkin-like structure that is uh, uh, about four to six inches long, hanging down, and uh, what you can mostly see, I can see a couple of remnant ones from the last season's bloom, but all the new green growth at the tips of the branches are going to be next next season's uh, next season's uh, catkins, male flowers. So here is a remnant of the male flower.
right here. So, so as I say, a very ancient species of tree, uh, very rare. I've seen them survive in one instance, possibly down to minus 10 uh, as on an established tree. Uh, very drought tolerant, very tough. Uh, the cones taking two years to ripen the nuts. Um, and uh, a very unique species of tree that uh, uh, it's interesting that it is related to several other species. One is the most common houseplant tree in the world is called the Norfolk Island Pine, which is not a pine tree at all. It's another species of Araucaria. Now, so uh, these trees, these Araucaria trees are so ancient on this earth that they go back to a time before there were continents. In other words, it, uh, the land mass of the earth was all one land mass. And as South America separated uh, from um, Africa and from Australia, and they went in various different directions over time, um, the species that had been the monkey puzzle tree, uh, which is, this is the, the more ancestral form of the Araucaria here, um, uh, evolved differently. Um, in Australia, um, it's called Araucaria bidwillii, and the common name for it is Bunya Bunya. It's not as hardy, because where it survives in Australia is a warmer part of Australia, and warmer than South America. And so the Bunya Bunya is actually a very a large nut, even larger than these monkey puzzle nuts, uh, on uh, cones that were a little bit bigger. Unfortunately for some of the harvesters, uh, in, uh, in, in my observation at least, uh, the bunya bunya can fall as an intact cone, which, which, which represents some danger uh, from a big falling uh, heavy object like that uh, at a great height. The Australian Aboriginal peoples held the nuts in such great ex esteem that they did not... Um, these peoples who lived in Australia for 40, 50,000 years or something like that, they did not own land. They were not farmers. And so they did not pass on any kind of land uh, to their uh, uh, children, but they would pass on, families would pass on picking rights to individual bunya bunya trees uh, from one uh, family to, the, to their descendants. Um, so that's the esteem with which they held the nuts. And um, in, uh, in the case of the Norfolk Island pine, as I mentioned, the most common houseplant tree uh, in the world, probably, or at least in North America. Um, a, a tree with very horizontal, very smooth branching. Now, why would the Norfolk Island pine, which is not a pine in all, but an araucaria, have the smooth branches as opposed to the very sharp branches of the monkey puzzle and the bunya bunya? Well, it turns out that little Norfolk Island, way out in the South Pacific, halfway between Australia and South America, uh, no herbivores survived on Norfolk Island. Nothing that would eat the trees. And so over the millennia, they no longer needed to have all these sharp leaves. So they lost that characteristic. And the, now the Norfolk Island species uh, um, is a very smooth uh, leaf and, uh, and non-prickly. Uh, I was just recently uh, reading about the Willemi pine, another Araucaria that was recently discovered in Australia, uh, in a remote mountain canyon in Australia. Now this is very separate from the Bunya Bunya species native to Australia. This species, um, uh, Willemi pine is called, uh, was thought to be extinct and only known from the fossil record until I think 1997 when uh, some enterprising botanist discovered uh, a living grove of these trees, some of them over a hundred feet tall, uh, in a very remote canyon. And uh, they sent seeds off to Kew Gardens in England and, uh, um, and are testing it for hardiness and such. So this is a whole other species of Araucaria that's been found. So these are kind of unique trees that are real survivors on this earth. Nothing, like, nothing else is like them really in so many respects. Uh, and so they're certainly worth preserving. The, um, the monkey puzzle trees are 
common now uh, as big old city trees uh, up and down the west coast. A lot of those were planted back in early, very early 20th century and are now 100 feet tall or so. Um, so uh, thank you very much.